Today, I am delighted, thrilled, to place the spotlight on an organization that works equally hard to champion and uplift young minds and future innovators. John Deere, a friend, a partner, an advocate of the World Food Prize for more than two decades. Many of you may know John Deere as a global leader whose work is revolutionizing agriculture and helping those who are meeting the world's increasing need for food, fuel, shelter, and infrastructure. My first introduction to John Deere was at age seven. As a little girl in Pakistan, I first recalled seeing the deer in the logo on machinery in the agricultural fields of Punjab in the 1970s. Just a few years after Norman Borlaug won the Nobel Peace Prize for his lifetime of work in feeding a hungry world, including famine in Pakistan. Of course, as you all know, the company's story starts much earlier in 1837 with a man whose determination and resilience transformed the way the world farmed, John Deere. Today, it's my great privilege and honor to introduce you to an individual who reflects that historic legacy and who embraces innovation and the do good, change lives spirit that both John Deere and Norman Borlaug would have been proud of. I want you to meet Joshua Jepson, Senior Vice President and Chief Op Financial Officer at Deere and Company. Starting his career 24 years ago as an intern in Deere's engine factory in Mexico, Mr. Jepson has worked in communities around the globe, from Ottumwa, Iowa to Singapore. He has helped lead John Deere's transformation by emphasizing value for farmers through technology, and he's responsible for the organization's accounting, finance, strategy, and sustainability arenas. But what's most compelling about Josh is not just his financial acumen, but his commitment to promoting humanitarianism and embracing relationships. Just a few weeks ago, Josh returned to that factory in Mexico where he interned 24 years ago. It was there he learned the power of teamwork, the importance of building lasting relationships, the pursuit of excellence, and what it truly means to run like a deer. Please join me in welcoming Joshua Jepson. Well, thank you, Michelle, for the kind introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Jepson, and I, I'm the Chief Financial Officer at John Deere. I also serve on the board of the John Deere Foundation, and I feel incredibly privileged to be joining you all today. For John Deere, we're humbled to join others in hosting this event because it exists to honor you and your contributions. Your farmers, scientists, humanitarians, civil servants, educators, students, entrepreneurs, activists, and so much more. We're proud to welcome you to one of our home communities, Des Moines, Iowa. And personally, I'm proud to welcome you to my home state. I grew up in Durant, Iowa, about 150 miles east of here. I attended the University of Northern Iowa, and as Michelle mentioned, I joined John Deere as an intern uh, 24 years ago. As an Iowan and John Deere employee, our connection to Dr. Norman Borlaug and the World Food Prize has always been a source of pride for me. The connection is more than simply our shared statehood. It is a connection based on a shared value. We value farmers and the noble work they do for all of us. We believe firmly that the world's farmers deserve our collective support and advocacy if our goal is to realize the full promise of the Green Revolution. Of course, the Green Revolution represents our shared commitment to creating a world in which food is a moral right for all. But more than this, 
However, it puts us on a path, a shared path, to creating a world where everyone has a right to a fundamentally humane and sustainable existence. Before sharing a bit about the role we play at John Deere in supporting the Green Revolution, please allow me to make some acknowledgments and thanks. Today, we meet on the land of the Iowa, or Iowa, also known as the Bakoje, as well as the Sauk and Meskwaki. We are humbled to be joined by Chairman Tim Rod of the Iowa Tribe of Kansas and Nebraska. In addition to being an extraordinary tribal leader, he is a farmer, an impactful advocate for regenerative agricultural practices, carrying on a tradition of stewardship from his nation. This stewardship deserves special recognition at the World Food Prize, because as Dr. Borlaug reminded us in his 1970 Nobel Lecture, it was indigenous peoples and likely women agriculturalists who were the foremost benefactors of mankind when they began domesticating crops several thousand years ago. In addition, please allow me to acknowledge Heidi Kuhn and the past recipients of the World Food Prize. I know I can speak for everyone here in saying we are both indebted to you and inspired by you. So congratulations. And moreover, I'd like to thank and acknowledge the other supporters of the World Food Prize Foundation, including particularly the Ruan family, without whom the World Food Prize would not be possible. And lastly, I'd like to thank the entire World Food Prize Foundation staff for their tireless efforts in making the World Food Prize events and programs possible. I'd like to invite the World Food Prize staff to rise and be recognized. Turning to my remarks, I want to start with a quote of Dr. Borlaug's that stands out personally for me. There are no miracles in agricultural production. Instead, agricultural production has been throughout history and continues to be today a product of tireless, challenging, and urgent work of millions of farmers who fight a quiet, increasingly difficult task to produce food for themselves, their families, their communities, and the world. It was amid this quiet fight that John Deere as a business arose 186 years ago, about 240 miles east of here in Grand Detour, Illinois. Our founder could not offer miracles to the farmers he served, but he could provide innovation to the tools he sold them, such as replacing the iron plow with a steel one. John Deere's successors followed our founder's example when they helped farmers replace their horses and oxen with tractors. Their successors, in turn, replaced these machines with larger and more powerful ones to keep pace with increasing demand, yields, and farm sizes. Knowing the ever-changing demands and challenges that farmers face, at John Deere, we do not measure our progress in mere steps. We measure progress in leaps. And this is more than a catchy metaphor or, or, or slogan derived from our logo. It's a call to action to serve farmers and assist them in overcoming the significant challenges they face, ranging from ec economic crises, war, pandemics, and increasing weather volatility. To be achieved, the, world food, uh, the Green Revolution will require revolutionary technological innovations fueled by a commitment to move forward with farmers further and faster than ever. The next leap we see demands the deployment of technologies that will unlock greater economic value for farmers in ways that create economic, social, and environmental value for everyone. Using technologies such as connectivity, guidance, positioning, autonomy, automation, data collection, and analytics, farmers around the world are now able to plant, cultivate, and harvest more with less and do so more resiliently. For instance, working with Iowa State University, we have developed an 80-acre demonstration farm about 40 miles north of here, where we will test some of our most promising technologies in conjunction with regenerative agricultural practices. These include our exact Emerge planting technology, which enables precise planting at speeds up to 10 miles per hour. And to this, we add ExactShot, which uses a sensor to register when each seed is, is 
in the process of going into the soil. And as this occurs, automation enables the machine to spray only the amount of fertilizer needed directly next to the seed at the exact moment it goes into the ground. Giving the seed the exact amount of nutrients it needs in the exact location at the exact right time. To put this in perspective, across the U.S. corn crop alone, exact shot could save over 93 million gallons of starter fertilizer, prevent wasted fertilizer, and decrease the risk of runoff. These are just two examples of innovations that we will employ as our part in contributing to the green revolution. Working side by side with Iowa State's talented educators and researchers, we will use our cloud-based farm management system to measure crop productivity, the economic cost of production, soil health, water quality, carbon intensity, and biodiversity. And our promotion of transformative technologies, technologies is not limited to the farmers only like the ones we have in Iowa. By providing world, the world's farmers with access to lower cost technologies that permit greater choice in unlocking value, regardless of where they farm and what they grow, we believe we can contribute to the acceleration of the green revolution. For instance, by providing global customers with modular telematics gateway, which we call John Deere Link, and connected it to our John Deere Operations Center, farmers all over the world now have ready access to their information about how they work to make them more efficient and prevent unintended waste. For instance, John Deere, we recently celebrated our 25th anniversary being a manufacturer in India, where we've seen firsthand how the deployment of a growing stack of technologies is assisting in making farmers the ability to grow more, make more income, and use less to do so. Importantly, we've seen how these technologies allow farm families to reduce household drudgery and dedicate themselves to other endeavors, including education, entrepreneurship, and well-being. Our promotion of technology is not limited to the traditional sport of farmers like those in Iowa or India. We're also committed to the deployment of technology to help farmers in new ways. And one example that we're humbled to share, particularly in the presence of Heidi Kuhn, in, in, is our support of the Halo Trust and its demining efforts in Ukraine. Just over a year ago, the Halo Trust reached out to John Deere to inform us that they were testing John Deere tractors to support their demining work. While we've seen some extraordinary applications of our equipment over nearly 200 years, none may be more impactful or inspiring than a John Deere tractor equipped by the experts at the Halo Trust to help eliminate the scourge of mines and explosives from a farmer's field. We're grateful to the Halo Trust for considering our tractors for their use, and we're so pleased to be counted among the financial supporters of its work. What the Halo Trust powerfully, powerfully reveals to us at John Deere is that the Green Revolution requires us to think of the world's farmers differently and more collectively than ever before. Using the words of Dr. Borlaug again, we must see ourselves as part of a vast team working toward a common vision. We must ensure that others on this team, including nonprofit organizations who play roles as or more important than John Deere, are given the greatest opportunity to succeed. There's one obvious way corporations and foundations can do this, and I apologize for being a bit simplistic, but we must become better donors. Offering praise for Dr. Borlaug's words and making acknowledgments of others is not enough. In his 1970 Nobel lecture and throughout his life, Dr. Borlaug lamented the chronic underinvestment in agricultural research and education. The private sector, including specifically those businesses involved in agriculture, have a responsibility to help close the gaps in investment. The support of farmers and the elimination of hunger help secure the peace and resilience upon which our economic system depends. Guided by concepts such as trust-based philanthropy, we can be, do better, particularly honoring the work of nonprofit organizations serving marginalized growers capable of making leaps of their own. To that end, in August, the John Deere Foundation awarded a total of $19 million to three such organizations. We awarded $5 million to the United Nations World Food Program, the recipient of the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize, to support its capa capacity building, including through technological innovation. We awarded $7.5 million to the One Acre Fund, the recent recipient of the prestigious Conrad N. Hilton Foundation Humanitarian Prize to fund its general operations. And we awarded $6.5 million to the Nature Conservancy, 
to promote reforestation and forest conservation in key food landscapes globally. These are the largest grants in our foundation's history, and we're grateful to support these organizations in their leaps. These financial contributions are important, but they're made even better when combined with advocacy. So I would love to help introduce other businesses and foundations to the amazing work of these organizations and the others that we support, including specifically the World Food Prize Foundation. In wrapping up my remarks, please let me end where we began. While there are no miracles in agricultural production, there are tremendously hardworking people with a noble purpose to feed the world. Together, through a forum like the World Food Prize, we have the proven capacity to achieve great things with farmers and for the world. And like Dr. Borlaug, I am optimistic for the future of mankind. Thank you for allowing us to join you in this work.